Hello, can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Wonderful, wonderful. Greetings from Zurich and uh, thanks to the organizers uh, of this workshop. And honestly, when I received the announcement uh, of this workshop, I was quite excited in particular because I discovered high dimensional computing quite recently uh, by the uh, paper uh, Pentica Nerva wrote. And uh, on the other hand, I then uh, asked myself if it would be a kind of outlier here uh, for the following uh, reason. Um, I'm concerned with human working memory rather than with algorithmic and technical devices. And um, human working memory certainly has limited capacity. It makes errors and some of them are very systematic and in particular it forgets. And um, experimental researchers from this field um, design experiments. They're seemingly simple, but they are very subtle. And uh, this is the way, in a very tiny nutshell, what they do. They present a study list of items, A, B, C, to a participant, and uh, then ask the participant to fulfill a particular task. This could be uh, to recall this list in forward order, in backward order, whatever. And the observables are the probabilities to recall certain items uh, in, the, in the list. Um, if you plot the serial position of the item against the recall probability, you obtain what is called a serial position curve. These are data from uh, Bennett Murdoch. And here are more stylized data which show that the serial position curves depend on the task. Here we have the forward task, uh, recall uh, the list from the beginning to the end. Well, um, did you intend to share your screen? Yeah. I don't see yes. the screen. Uh, I, can you oh. share your screen? I unshared my screen. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. Is Do you see it now? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, sorry again, this, this here is the serial position curve where you have here the serial positions of the items where you here have the recall probability and here you have the serial position curves in a forward task. Uh, here the participant is asked to recall the list in the order uh, uh, items appear and here the participant is asked to recall uh, the, um, uh, the list in reverse order. So um, this is one of the, as I would call them, stylized experimental facts and these findings are very robust. And um, what I'm doing, um, yeah, uh, is uh, to try to model these experimental data. And um, very briefly, due to the lack of time, I would only like to mention one theory, which is also related very much to what we're doing here in the workshop. Um, it is um, uh, work by uh, Bennett Murdoch, which uh, is a distributed working, uh, which is a distributed memory model where information is stored in one common memory vector. Items are represented by high dimensional random vectors drawn from a multivariate normal distribution and associations are represented by convolutions of item vectors due to uh, what uh, Tony Plate uh, developed um, uh, the, the convolution uh, within the holographic reused uh, representation uh, framework. Um, this is another model. The, I do not want to give a complete list of models here. I only wanted to say um, there are models which are based on high dimensional computing. What I'm going to do is a little bit different. Um, I stick to the um, very typically high dimensional framework in uh, that I consider a matrix uh, space of uh, bipolar vectors of length n where n is larger than 100. I equip this metric space with a normalized Hamming distance and I define binary operations on it. One is the uh, 
compounded by its multiplication. Uh, I will not talk about it today. And the other one is addition. And what you see is that you do not see permutations. Given the importance of permutations for coding serial order, um, raises then the question how then is sequential ordering represented without these permutations? And the answer is, this is what I'm going to talk about, that the, the, the addition I define uh, is not associative, which means that the sum depends on the ordering of the components. Talking about addition, you will not see anything you do not know. It is very common, it is a kind of uh, fuzzy majority rule, one could say, if I add two minus ones together, I obtain a minus one. If I add two plus ones together, I obtain a plus one. But if I add a minus one to a plus one, I would get a zero, which is not allowed, of course. Um, and this is then a random variable zeta, um, which, is, which takes the value plus one with some probability p. There are two extreme cases, of course, where p equals zero and where p, uh, p equals one. You see them here. If p is in the open interval uh, of uh, zero and one, uh, the addition is not associative anymore, which means that x plus y in brackets plus z is not equal to x plus in brackets y plus z. Um, a very tiny example where you uh, are faced with this kind of uh, situation is if you, if you would uh, memorize the start list of three items A, B, C. And of course we would like uh, to write this representation as a sum of representatives x, y, and z. But as I told you, this is not what we are uh, allowed to do. We have to decide where to put the brackets. Therefore, we have two, I will now call them states. Um, one is called L, which is due to the left uh, associativity of addition, and R, which is the right associativity of the, of the um, uh, addition. The interesting thing now about these two states is, first of all, this is not a real surprise, these two states are dissimilar, fine. Um, but in, if the list length becomes infinite, these two states become orthogonal. Um, the rate of convergence is very fast. Even when you have a list length of maybe eight or 10, these vectors are already orthogonal. Um, you can use this for building a representation of longer lists, A, B, C to G, for example, uh, in the following way. Initially, the participant is in a pre-experimental cognitive state, eta. Then you build successively uh, the following vector by taking the eta here, plus the a corresponding to this item here, plus the b corresponding to this item here, and so forth, uh, to finally get this vector l here. The same with the right addition. You start with the eta here at the a corresponding to this one here, uh, adding the b, and then you end up with, the, with this vector here. These two vectors now um, already code some information. As you see here, the distance between the G and the L is smaller than the distance of F and L. What you see here, this is the distance um, as a function of the, um, of, of the items, and you see here a distance gradient. This one here uh, corresponds um, to L, with G having the smallest distance from L, which is down here, while this one here is the gradient corresponding to R. Um, 
these gradients are steepest if p equals one half and they become flat for p approaching zero or one these are the cases in which addition is um, uh, associative now um, the next thing we need or i needed was um, the, the the term similarity um, similarity very often is defined in terms of uh, of the cosine between uh, two states x uh, and why here, I um, uh, choose another way which is closer or as close related to the probabilistic nature of a uh, high dimensional uh, computing. And the idea simply is that X and Y are the more similar, the less likely it is to find some Z randomly which is somehow in between so therefore i define similarity as one minus the probability that i find another one uh, with a smaller distance uh, to x than y has this is now the definition i used uh, the um, uh, distribution looks precisely the same as when using cosine of course because the cosine is closely related to the distance um, but nevertheless, I do not need another uh, calculation rule here. I simply can transform, as we will see, distance into similarity. Um, also, in uh, uh, Penty's paper, uh, similarity was taken as a measure for co-activation, which is a very um, uh, nice illustration of it. And finally, we can now say that recall probability increases with the co-activation so the more similar x is to a state y the higher is the probability to recall x from this y here is this kind of, uh, is this transition from distance to similarity this nothing has happened uh, uh, only the uh, uh, definition I wrote down here, and you and you see that in here the the, uh, the distance the, the blue distance gradient uh, translates in this um, recall uh, probability uh, curve, which corresponds to this state. Uh, now it's the first time that we could uh, face some experimental data. Um, which is done here. Um, Murdoch did some, did a huge number of experiments in which he varied the length of the list. Here uh, he gave the participant a list of length 40, of 30, of 20, and so on. These numbers here refer to uh, the time uh, each item is presented, but uh, since time in this model right now doesn't play any role, simply forget about these. More importantly is, you see these gradients here, they are quite similar. And in fact, if you uh, put all of them together, so if, if you normalize them, shift this to here and to here, blah, blah, blah um, then you obtain this kind of bundle, which simply shows that this uh, what is called recency gradient uh, is independent of list length. If you do, if, if you do the same with the, with the model, um, simply uh, uh, doing this for, 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 for different list lengths, uh, it is 7, 10, 15, 20, 30, you obtain a very, very similar picture. This picture, there is no, absolutely no fitting of data. It simply pops out. And of course, uh, we could vary the P in order uh, uh, to change this uh, gradient here a little bit, but this is more or less clear how it works. This wasn't important. As I, as I said, I'm very much interested in quantitatively um, reproducing typical experimental uh, facts. 
Well, this looked quite encouraging. And so I thought, what about uh, the serial positioning curve, which also includes the primacy reason here. Um, what I came up with is, was the following. It is the idea, oh, first uh, to recall, this is the serial positioning curve in this uh, forward recall task. This is the serial position curve in the backward recall task. The idea now is that this list is represented by the superposition of two states, L and R, as I, as I showed you. Um, so the cognitive representation is the superposition of two cognitive states, um, which is certainly not, uh, which is kind of quantum mechanical thinking where you have that a, a quantum mechanical system is characterized by the superposition of different states. And um, you can then think about the recall probability. The idea is uh, the following. If you have an item X, it activates both states, the state R as well as the state L. And the idea then was that the recall probability of this item S, given this list S here, is nothing else than a linear uh, combination of these uh, similarities. Um, this is, of course, the most simple setting where you have a linear uh, combination of these two other things are possible. Um, however, this here, uh, for different choices of alpha prime and beta prime, gives you these figures here. This one is the uh, serial position curve where we give more weight to the um, uh, recency state, which is L. And this one is the one where we give more weight to the primacy uh, state, which is here. But what you see here, um, this is a kind of, uh, yeah, I always say Nike shaped huh? um, uh, serial position curve. This is quite similar to this one here. Um, while we also see that this forward positioning curve is in fact lower than this backward positioning curve. Um, this, is, this is the idea I follow at the moment and uh, I haven't done too much. Everything follows from uh, the uh, uh, addition operation, which is um, uh, not associative. We've seen that um, the, the, the idea was that sequential memorizing a list creates two orthogonal states, L and R, due to the two modes of addition being left associative and right associative. Due to this non-associativity uh, of addition, each state codes serial ordering. This is, uh, for, for me, it was remarkable because uh, there are some models on the market which uh, postulate a kind of uh, activity gradient and here, this activity or distance gradient simply comes from the um, uh, property of uh, addition. The next idea was then to say, okay, the single list is represented by a superposition of two coexisting orthogonal states, and finally, a cognitive task, uh, either forward or backward or whatever, might be understood as a kind of uh, measurement in the, in the quantum mechanical sense, a measurement on the superposition of these two states. Um, this is actually what came out of my thinking when I uh, discovered uh, high dimensional uh, computing. And um, I felt that it is a very 
uh, good formalism to uh, uh, to do a very elementary modeling. This is this is the way I've gone so far. These are the um, uh, these are the results with respect to uh, addition uh, right now. The point now is I haven't talked about associative memory um, until now. I haven't used it. Um, but if the list has some limit, uh, similar items acoustically, for example, A, F, and G, they're different acoustically, but B and D uh, sound very similar. And uh, in order to describe this kind of list, I'm pretty sure that now is the time for thinking about how uh, associative memory uh, comes into play because we do not only have a sequence coding of these letters here, but we also have an uh, association uh, between B and D, and this will be now uh, the next step. And um, with this uh, little output, uh, outlook, not output, <laughs> outlook, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, exciting presentation, uh, really. Uh, so we have uh, some time for questions. Uh, so, so feel free to type uh, in the, to write to the chat, or you can enable your. Uh, you may enable your mic and uh, ask a question if any uh, online. Let's wait. Okay, so we have a question in the chat here. Uh, could you please explain again how the list is recalled or unbound? This is a good question. At the moment, I simply say, um, where is it? Um, if you have, if you have a state here. And um, then you um, uh, compare this, uh, then, then you give a probe, as it is uh, uh, called, like this uh, X here. And uh, you choose uh, uh, the, the, the item in the list with the, with the smallest uh, distance. Right now, this is um, um, only, uh, giving a probe, then it will give you the item in the list uh, having the same uh, uh, distance from the list as uh, this probe has. It is. It is really. It, it works completely uh, with uh, with coactivation. So a, a a probe X will coactivate a probe X prime in the list, um, which is closest to it. Any more questions? Stefan? Yes. yes I'm uh, an audio question. Uh, Stefan, hi, Ross Gaylor here. Oh, uh, hi, Ross. Howdy. Could you, uh, you had a slide, uh, a few slides back, uh, where you were demonstrating the, um, uh, the, the accumulation of the L and R. That's the one. Ah. Thank you very much. No, just, um, no. So if we go forward one. That one, yes, thank you. Ah, no, nope, too far. <laughs> Fine. No, sorry, there's a bit of a, yeah, so I th it was actually, no, the slide before that. Uh, yeah, this it is... had a very strange, had an unusual notation. It had oh. a term with a single, an unbalanced parenthesis and a plus. Aha, I guess you mean this one. This one, yes, thank you. So yeah. if, if I'm reading that correctly, uh, you could interpret uh, each of those two columns as saying that you're accumulating a running sum, yeah. but you're using a different addition operator in each of those. 
yeah. and just by the choice of the addition operator you're you're creating something which is weighted towards the beginning or weighted towards the end which is, is which if that's is that correct interpretation this is absolutely correct yeah May, maybe i have another picture for you this is this one um uh -huh. <laughs> this is uh, I, of course, I asked myself, uh, in particular because I wanted to ask you, if uh, there is any possibility to realize this kind of addition uh, uh, in technical uh, devices or something like this. And here the idea is simply you have a, di a dipole which is convex up or convex down, and um, it is active only in this uh, conca uh, convex region. Here can something be added, and therefore this B can only be added here, 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 and if you have this one here, uh, it can grow into this direction. This is uh, this is maybe only another picture. This is this is simply the the the, the question uh, whether these uh, two modes of addition can be realized uh, physically, if you want so. Well, I, I I'm probably the very wrong person to ask that question <laughs> of, but I would think that the uh, uh, the way you defined your original uh, non-associative addition with uh, uh, basically a random value in it, I, I would think that that would be perfectly capable of being physically realized. In some sense, I saw this in the paper, this uh, uh, the, 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 the term used was uh, we, we uh, we break the symmetry by using mm -hmm. a random variable and this is nothing else than doing this here and um, of course um, uh, it is a mixture you are you are right between something this is uh, this is a quasi uh, deterministic or half random way of adding as i as i said it's a kind of fuzzy majority rule Uh, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> Thanks for asking us. All right. Um, I suggest if there are more questions to Stefan, so again, uh, once again, uh, please direct them to the mailing list uh, so, so that we have a live discussion even there. Uh, but uh, uh, I want to thank Stefan once again, as well as Dennis, for their excellent presentations. And uh, so uh, by this, I close this webinar. So um, I'll see you in two weeks. So please check the uh, program uh, on the website. Uh, and I will publish the videos from today's talk uh, talks uh, there as well. So uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, have a good night, day, uh, <laughs> afternoon. Uh, so um, take care. Bye. Thank you, Kenny. Bye. Bye to everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.